This is Jared Horak, and in this handicapping video, I'm going to do a quick preview of the Coaching Club American Oaks. That's a grade one at Saratoga on Saturday, July 22nd. And then I'll also I'll take a look for Sunday, July 23rd, the grade two shoe V. Now, if you're interested in reading all of my Saratoga handicapping articles, you can find those articles at todaysracingdigest.com. I'm doing a lot of uh, stakes previews where I preview all of the stakes races each week at Saratoga. And then after all the stakes races run each week, I do some stakes recaps. So go over uh, to todaysracingdigest.com and click on the news articles section. You're going to find all of my Saratoga articles. I've also done some for Del Mar as well. Uh, so check all of that out at todaysracingdigest.com. And the past performances in this video are courtesy of Today's Racing Digest. Now we're going to look at the Coaching Club American Oaks, and that'll be the ninth race at Saratoga uh, for Saturday, July 22nd. Grade 1, $500,000 Coaching Club American Oaks, three-year-old fillies, a mile and an eighth on the main track. And the scheduled post time is 5.42 p.m. Eastern. South Lawn will break from the inside post. And this is a filly that really started to get good uh, over the winter at fairgrounds. Uh, she won an optional claiming race by eight lengths, stalking the pace. Uh, that was on February 17th. March 25th, the grade two fairgrounds Oaks from the inside post, she, she was sitting back uh, within striking range throughout and she took over and she won by more than three lengths. Pretty Mischievous was the runner up there and Pretty Mis Mischievous came back and she won the Kentucky Oaks and South Lawn didn't fire that day in the Kentucky Oaks. She finished 10th, beaten 10 lengths. She's been laid off since then. She had a bullet workout at Churchill Downs on July 9th. Florent Giroux jumps aboard and I think she can save ground stalking the pace. Wet Paint is number two, probably the one to beat in here. She's two to one morning line, and she reconnects with her winning rider, Flavian Pratt. She's run eight times with four wins in two seconds. Last time out in the Monomoy Girl Stakes, a one-mile race at Ellis Park, she's got absolutely no pace help. 25, 48 and change, 113. Who's your filly was just out there all alone, controlling the pace. And Wet Paint tried to get involved late, and she was clearly second best. So in this race, if she can get some more pace help, she certainly can be a threat. Prior to the Monomoy Girl, she was fourth in the Kentucky Oaks as the beaten favorite, and then she won the Grade 3 Fantasy, the Honey Bee, and the Martha Washington all at Oaklawn Park earlier this year. Number three in here is Sacred uh, Wish, and she is 10 to 1 morning line for trainer George Weaver, and she's run five times with a win, two seconds, and a third, so she's still eligible for an entry-level allowance race. And she was in an optional claiming race last time. She was second beaten the length. Well, they've tried her in Stakes Company a couple of times, the Grade 2 Gulfstream Park Oak. She rallied from 8th to finish 2nd. Uh, the Grade 2 Black Eyed Susan, she was ninth, beaten 16 lengths. She did have a troubled trip that day. Uh, she caught the mud last time, so we know she can handle a wet track in case the track does come up wet at Saratoga. Uh, but she's one that she does have some stalking speed, but she's going to have to pick up her game. Gambling Girl for trainer Todd Pletcher is back at the scene of her biggest career victory, that victory, seven furlong maiden special weight New York bred race last summer at Saratoga, and she won by 10 lengths. And then she followed that up with a state bred stake score of Belmont at Aqueduct uh, last year. And then she did, had some success in some of the um, Kentucky Oaks points races. The Demoiselle Stakes, she was third beating the length. The Grade 3 Gazelle, she was second beating the half length. And then in the Kentucky Oaks, she almost won that one at 13 to 1. She was second beating the neck. She gave Pretty mischievous, a real battle there. She was getting to her late, just couldn't quite get to her. So she's won Irad Ortiz Jr. for trainer Todd Pletcher. We know she likes Saratoga. She's got a decent late kick and look for her to try to get involved late. Who's your filly? Number five. She's five to two morning line for trainer Tom Amos. She's four for seven lifetime. She was outstanding as a two-year-old, winning the Rags to Riches and the Goldenrod Stakes. They thought maybe they could put her on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, she struggled earlier this year. The Rachel Alexandra, she was third beaten eight lengths. The Fairgrounds Oak, she was fourth beaten 15 lengths. They laid her off. The Black Eyed Susan stakes her first start back. She set the pace. She was clearly second best there. And then last time, the Monomoy girl, she controlled the pace. So she's back in form again. She's got early pressing speed. And I would not be surprised if they try to do exactly what they did last time in the Monomoy girl. Get out there and try to control the pace. Uh, but one horse that might have um, some other thoughts and might want to be near the lead is number five. She's looking lucky. Uh, she's 10 to 1 morning line, but Kendrick Carmouche is uh, an aggressive rider, and this horse likes to be up on the pace, or at least that has been the case in her good races. 
The race originally scheduled for the turf earlier this year in a maiden race. She pressed from second. She took over. She graduated by 13 lengths. And then her last couple starts in the optional claiming ranks, a one-mile race around one turn at Churchill Downs in June. She battled on the pace, and then she weakened to finish fourth by 10. But then last time in the slop at Ellis Park at a mile and an eighth, she was all over the pace, and she won by seven. So I think that they're going to want to get her up on the pace along with who's your filly. So those two look like the two horses that are going to be out there early. You're going to see other horses trying to uh, get involved late, like Gambling Girl, Wet Paint. And then you have Sacred Wish with at least some tactical speed. And then Southlawn trying to save ground, stalking the pace. And that's who I'm going to pick in here. Southlawn will be my top choice. She's 9-2 to two morning line. I do think Wet Paint is the one to hold off. But Southlawn could end up getting the first run. If there's two outside horses set on as fractions, I can see Southlawn just biding her time, stalking the pace, saving all the ground. And at 9-2, to two, she'll offer a little bit of value. Now let's take a look at, for Sunday, July 23rd, that grade two $200,000 shoe V stakes. That's going to go as the fourth race. It's a mile and an eighth for fillies and mares. Three o'clock p.m. Eastern time is the post time, and there's only a four-horse field. Scratch Cat will break from the inside post. Doesn't really have a lot of speed. This one likes to come from off the pace. She's two for 11 with three seconds and a third, and she's over two at Saratoga with a runner-up finish. And that runner-up finish was her last start at Saratoga on July 16th. A race originally scheduled to, for the turf moved to the dirt. She was second, beaten five lengths, but she was 14 lengths clear of the show finisher. It was only a three-horse field there. So she catches another short field inside post. She's probably overmatched in here, facing some very good horses, uh, such as number two, Nest, making her first start uh, since the Breeders' Cup this staff. And she was the beaten favorite, finishing fourth that day. But she had an outstanding campaign last year of winning some big races. The grade one Ashland Stakes, she won that one. She was second in the Kentucky Oaks, second in the Belmont Stakes against the boys at a mile and a half. The Coaching Club American Oaks, her first start at Saratoga, she won by 12 at a mile and an eighth. The grade one Alabama at Saratoga, she won that one by more than four. So she's two for two at Saratoga. She has five starts at a mile and an eighth with three uh, wins in a second. And then her other big win last year was the Bell Dame. Uh, she won that one by nine lengths. So she's one that has good tactical speed, but she might need this start in her first start in eight months, but only a four-horse field. She should run a quality race. Now, the horse to catch in here, uh, Pistol Liz of Blazin. Uh, this one, 11 starts. She's very consistent. Three wins, four seconds, and two-thirds. She hasn't run at Saratoga. She hasn't run at this distance. She did press and score last time out at Parks at a mile and 70 yards against Optional Claiming Company. That was on June 21st. I think that they're going to go to the lead in here. It's a four-horse field. There's really no other speed horses, so I would expect that, that this horse tries to go to the lead. Clary Air is probably going to try to come from last. She's a very good closer for Steve Asmussen. Doesn't matter if there's no pace. Doesn't matter if there's a fast pace. She always just seems to make her late run in the stretch. And th does she ever have a big late run? She's one that's very classy. Eight for 19, five seconds and three thirds. She's banked more than $3 million in her career. And she has four start to Saratoga with a win, a second and a third. Now, a mile and a sixteenth is her best distance, but she has won at a mile and an eighth before, and she's one that won the Shoe V last year. So at this mile and an eighth distance, this is her lone victory at a mile and an eighth in the Shoe V. It was a four-horse field, and she rallied from last, and she won that one. So I think that that's what they're going to try to do again. She'll probably be last of four, and she'll just be plugging away in the stretch, and she produces a big leg kick. But I do think that Nest is going to be the one that I'm going to pick here, because I think that the long shot pistol is a blazon is going to go to the front she won't be able to hold on nest will get the first run and she'll take the lead over a track that she absolutely adores at probably one of her best distances at a mile and an eighth and i think nest number two is going to hold off number four clarier they're both daughters of curlin and uh, they both have a lot of ability and a lot of class but i think nest number two is going to get the jump and win and defeat number four clarier so don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like these videos, and I'll be back doing more Saratoga videos, and again, keep checking out my Saratoga articles at todaysracingdigest.com. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races.